Hi, everyone, and welcome to the next edition of the Academy by Acclivity Health Solutions. Again, Jeremy Powell here, CEO and one of the co-founders. And today we're going to jump right into the metrics that often are applied to value-based care um, contracts. Um, remember, all of these things hang off of the contract metrics. So instead of trying to pick a single contract metric and show you how those work, we're going to talk in general terms and we'll actually probably talk mostly around CMS metrics. Um, as you know, CMS has been the innovation arm inside of healthcare. They're the largest payer. So often um, they sort of set the stage and the rest of the market follows. Um, so we'll jump in. So thinking about what is important when it comes to value-based care metrics, uh, two of the biggest things are understanding very clearly you know, how you are measuring up against, up against benchmarks. So Medicare um, sets the benchmark for cost utilization at the, at the county and zip code level. So often you can get pretty clear what risk adjusted um, benchmarks should look like in your particular area. And then how do you perform, you know, as an ACO and how do you perform as the individual entity within the ACO or is pretty typical ways of thinking about cost and utilization. Uh, often you'll trend that out um, because you want to see if the model of care you're, you're applying to the population um, and the engagement that you're doing uh, and the kind of point of care um, clinical decision support your team's getting from your tooling is actually having the impact you'd expect. You can look at this uh, not only at the population level, you can benchmark individual persons against their um, their digital twins. Uh, so very clearly sort of helping clinicians think about what's likely to be the cost impact of not doing some engagements, um, as you might think of model of care improvement for coordinated care or care coordination. Um, you should be able to scorecard your team all the way down to the individual MPI level clinician. Um, it's an example of sort of thinking through what does cost you look like? Um, what do we see time, you know, over time, you know, spend by quarter, is it improving? Spend by place of service? Are we seeing prior or post results improving? Um, what does it look like when we start to break down, you know, individual trends at the at the cost level? Um, you can look at it whether it's you know a, an actual cost driver or whether it's the amount of claims. So uh, utilization is driving spend like more frequent uh, and familiar you know familiar spend and faces showing up. In the emergency department is a trigger, or is it a unit cost increase that's driving all of the spend? So you need to look at those things with more more clarity. Um, you should create a benchmark. The highlight here in this particular dashboard shows that this particular individual clinicians at the benchmark, everyone above that person is spending beyond budget, everyone ben beneath that number. Um, these are all persons you might get your best practices from, like what are they doing that's different and what are they doing up here that's causing this cost and utilization to be above risk adjusted benchmark. You can look at network performance by provider. So this is thinking through like, how are we seeing leakage or how are we managing the individual patient attribution logic in our own practice to capture as many of these patients into the models as possible? The law of large numbers works here. Uh, the bigger your pool, the more actuarial science work in your favor. You can look at practice variation. So individual clinicians that show up as um, between you know, zero and one standard deviation um, we'll have an amber color. Anyone beyond that will have a red color. And you're really looking to see, okay, why is this variation occurring? So that you can understand whether it's good or bad. That's your first step often. Um, your two biggest um, places to pay attention in utilization would be, you know, inappropriate emergency utilization. So you classify your, your emergency room visits as whether they were avoidable or primary care treatable or you know, urgent in, in nature. And so there's tooling that'll help you sort of figure that out. But this is a way of thinking about not only how do you report on those, but how you potentially classify them. You also do the same thing thinking about your inpatient utilization. You should be driving at a risk adjusted, you know, uh, inpatient visit per thousand as a metric you, you, you think that matters. That's a good trend across the industry to think about. This gets a little more finite in this sort of uh, deeper dive. Same with hospitalization rates. You should be thinking about, um, again, an absolute and risk-adjusted approach to both uh, the patients and then how they pull up to providers and how they pull those providers, pull those particular patients within parts of their payer landscape. Because again, the contracts will drive what matters when it comes to these kinds of, of quality measures. Um, and then all, obviously one of the biggest things that folks work on is risk adjustment scoring. So being able to recognize your documenting and coding appropriately, the level of need these patients have by really getting concise in how you're 
managing your diagnoses, your problems, and your HCC hierarchical condition coding inside of each of these patient journeys becomes incredibly important because it lifts your benchmark, um, and therefore you have more budget, you have more room to play and create that, that gap for savings. And then if you're doing sort of what's the best of the best, you should also be looking at predictive. Those things I showed you up to this point were all you know, reactive. You're looking at what happened or how you've done or how you know what your trends are. Almost always that's rear view looking. There's a whole host of predictive analytics often based upon machine learning and artificial intelligence. Here's an example of some of them that, that we think are really important for you to think about. Um, again, as you build your concepts around um, measuring the things that matter, uh, being able to look ahead through the windscreen um, not is is not the only perspective you need to have because Medicare is always going to pay on the after, um, but you need to be able to drive scores that end up on those scoreboards that you see in the rearview mirror. So these are the kind of things that we think are impactful for you as you make your way through choosing which are the most important metrics to sort of measure. Again, look forward to hearing your feedback. Um, talk to you soon. Send any information that you might want us to show you more about or any content you'd like to bring to life in the Academy to info at See you soon. Thank you.